All right, so we're gonna talk about the basics of how to do conversion tracking inside of Google Analytics 4. Uh, so with Google Analytics 4, everything is set up as an event. So that's always gonna be the first step is to navigate to your event section. And this will show you uh, the existing events that are currently set up. And to set up a new event, uh, you really have two options or two main options that most people are going to use. Uh, one of them is to create an event right inside of GA4. The other one is to use Google Tag Manager to create the event. So we're gonna show both options. We're not gonna do a deep dive on uh, conversion tracking and the intricacies of form tracking, but we are gonna look quickly at um, how you can get started here. So we're gonna click on Create Event, and this is gonna open up the Event Builder. Now this is where you can go to edit existing events you've already created if you need to, uh, but for now we're gonna create a new one. And again, we can name this anything we want. Uh, so let's do an example of if you were to do a thank you page. So again, you can name this and you could do form underscore uh, thank you. You could do a different order. We'll just name it this for now. Uh, and to do a thank you page, what we would do is we need two conditions. So we need the event name. In this case, it's not a click. It's going to be a page view. So we're going to do event name equals page view. And then what we're looking for here is page location. And this is where we can input the thank you page URL. So I'm gonna do just th uh, contains thank you. And what this would do is anytime there's a page view event on a URL that has thank you in it, that will trigger this thank you uh, page event that we're creating. So this can be a quick way to get thank you page events set up if you don't wanna use Google Tag Manager. And you could change this to equals to if you want or contains, there's a lot of parameters there. And you could obviously add more if there's another identifier in the thank you page and you don't wanna track all of them and you wanna track a certain one. Uh, you can build that out there. So all you would do is click create. And then now this event is saved here. Now, if you want to mark this event as a conversion, there is one more step. So you, you, so you have two options there. Uh, you can wait for the event to show up here. So once there's uh, the first event that comes through, you can see you have this toggle here where you could toggle on a conversion. So any event in GA4, you could uh, mark as a conversion if you want to. But if you don't want to wait for that event to come up, we can just go right into here and paste in our conversion event name. So in this case, it was thank you form and we can save that. And then now we have this set up. So when this event starts happening, it'll automatically be marked as a conversion. So that's really the, the main option of using this event builder. Now, really, you can use any of these parameters um, to modify the event. Um, we just showed a thank you page example. This would be outbound link clicks. So if you have a certain outbound link click, in this case, we have a calendar tool. You can do event name equals click and then the link URL containing uh, the URL that you want to capture there. Those are probably the most uh, common examples of using this event builder. Now, the second option would be to actually use Google Tag Manager. And this is my preferred method. Uh, it tends to be a little easier to manage, a little bit cleaner. You have access to the preview mode with Google Tag Manager to test the events a little more efficiently. Um, so the way we would do this here, and again, we're not going to get into all the details of how to do form tracking, but let's just create a new event. And again, we can name this anything that we want. Um, so for now, we'll just leave that blank, but you wouldn't, you, you could name this in a tag manager. So you have a reference. Then we're going to click tag configuration and go to GA4 event. This is now going to open up uh, the builder here and we're going to click on our GA4 tag. So that, that way this event gets sent to our correct GA4 account. Now the event name is important. This is what's gonna show up here exactly as these are. So for this purpose, we'll do just a uh, form submission event. So we could just title this really whatever we want. We'll do form submission. Um, and then now we have the event name passing through. Now I like to use the event parameters. What these can do is you can actually send additional data into GA4 and create some custom dimensions. Basically a custom dimension just allows you to break down the form submission more. So what you could do is set up one form submission that captures every form. And then you could use this event parameter to pull in the form ID. So we can do something like this, where what this will do is now inside of GA4, we can break the form submission down by ID. So it's a way you can kind of easily capture all the forms, assuming you have ID set up and all of that is working properly. I tend to like to prefer to set up additional events for each form uh, individually, but you, you can do it this way as well. Uh, you can really send any data through here. Like if we want page path, 
or click URL, really any of these variables you can plug into this and send into GA4 as a custom dimension. Uh, so again, we're not gonna go too deep into that today, but it's another option and it's typically good to set up a couple of these as you set up your event. So now we have the event name, we have some custom uh, parameters here. Uh, really what we just need to do now is the trigger. So for the trigger here, we're gonna create a new one. So again, you can name the trigger, so you have it for reference. I'm just gonna click into this. So there's a few options here. So you do have your form submission trigger. Um, you also have page view triggers, which are gonna be really common. Um, and then also the link click triggers are pretty common as well. So if you were gonna do a thank you page, we would click on page view and then go to some page views. And then here we're just looking for a page path. And then again, we could type in our thank you URL, whatever that is, and save this. And then this is gonna fire when somebody hits this URL. Uh, we also have the option of uh, doing the form submission trigger. So I'm gonna just close out of this event here. And uh, other options would be like a phone number click is another common uh, kind of event that can get set up here. So for a form submission, we'll just open up this one that's passing through. So you can see our event name, you can see some of the parameters. Uh, and then we have basically the trigger set to fire when this form ID is uh, submitted. So we're actually only gonna fire this on our contact form. And this is the ID for our contact form. So again, we're not gonna get too deep into this because there's a lot of different uh, issues that can come up with form tracking where this method may not work and you may need to use another one. Um, but th the general idea here is we name the event, we define if we want any of these custom dimensions or parameters, and then you configure your trigger to uh, exactly how your form is set up, whether it's a thank you page, whether you want it to be based on the submission, but the trigger is what's gonna determine how the event's gonna fire. So once you're done with that, Obviously preview mode in Google Tag Manager is gonna be very useful where you can actually test if those events are firing. What you could also do is uh, after you're done setting up your events and you wanna make sure they're working, we can go to uh, reports and then go to the real time report. And here's where we'll see some of the recent events that were happening. Uh, you'll see our recent conversion events. So I've, I clicked on the calendar a few times. So our calendar click event is working. Um, we could see it there and it's marked as a conversion and we could also see it here under events. So if you start to see your data for your event pass through here, you know you're on the right track and the data is tracking. So uh, that's really it. Those are kind of two methods that will get you very far with conversion tracking. So again, the first thing again to recap is to set an event up and you could either do that with the create event feature or by using Google Tag Manager. And then once you have your event set up, you just need to mark it as a conversion or define it as a conversion over here. And then now you'll have your conversion set up. And then once you have conversions, there's a lot you can do with that directly inside of GA4 with explorations and custom reports. Or you could send that data into a tool like Looker Studio and make visualizations there. And we have our Google Analytics 4 audit checklist available for download. Uh, anyone on our newsletter gets access to this. So this can be a great way when you're setting up your account to make sure you don't miss any steps. We cover about um, almost 75 different checkpoints of things to look for as you're setting up your account. So this can be really helpful uh, to make sure you don't miss any steps. Uh, make sure you're tracking all the conversions, you're utilizing all the reporting features, product linking. We've tried to cover as much as possible. Um, and we've listed out some of the common, if we scroll down here, some of the common uh, form submission types, link click events for email and phone that you could set up to give you a good jump start. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's actually an automatic tool where if you mark the checklist item as fail, it will automatically move that to this summary page and give you this nice looking audit report that you can give to a client. So if I clear out uh, all of these, you'll see there's nothing here. And then if we just put these back, uh, I'll mark this one as pass, and now we won't see this one in the uh, report here. So it'll automatically, we'll just pull in uh, the ones you mark as fail. And then this could be the report you deliver to your client or to uh, your organization. So again, we're giving these away uh, for free. Just head over to our newsletter and you can get your copy there.